Hello and welcome everyone to our new video. Today we will discuss necrotizing soft tissue infections, or NSTIs. These are serious bacterial infections affecting the skin and deeper tissues, leading to tissue death, or necrosis. Characteristics Rapid progression The infection spreads quickly, often requiring urgent diagnosis and treatment. High mortality and morbidity Without early intervention, NSTIs can be life-threatening and lead to significant complications, including amputation. Epidemiology. Increasing incidence. Cases in the U.S. have nearly doubled, likely due to better awareness and early recognition. Mortality and morbidity. Despite improved survival rates, currently 10 to 20 percent, survivors face high morbidity. About 15% of survivors require amputations, and up to 30% experience long-term physical limitations. Diagnostic Approach Clinical Diagnosis Diagnosis of NSTI is primarily based on clinical evaluation rather than specific tests. Risk Factors Higher risk in patients with conditions like obesity, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, and immunosuppression. Common among injection drug users and those with deep traumatic wounds. Common sites of infection often occurs in perineal, anorectal, foot, or lower extremities. Early signs and symptoms. Mild early symptoms may appear as simple cellulitis with mild skin redness or discoloration. Delayed diagnosis risks. Misdiagnosis can increase mortality as delays of just 6 to 12 hours in treatment impact outcomes. Nonspecific symptoms, common early signs include fever, intense pain, swelling, and skin hardness. Pain disproportionate to findings, a characteristic feature of NSTI is severe pain that seems excessive given the physical findings. Advanced symptoms, skin changes, symptoms like bully, fluid-filled blisters, etchemosis, bruising, and skin numbness often appear later. Gas in soft tissues, present in only about 10% of cases but, when seen, strongly suggests NSTI. Imaging for diagnosis. X-rays may show gas in soft tissues in about 47.9% of cases. CT scans. More effective than X-rays, revealing gas in around 70.3% of cases. Limitations. Lack of gas on imaging does not rule out NSTI, so imaging is a supportive tool rather than definitive. Laboratory findings, key lab indicators, elevated white blood cell count, WBC, low sodium, hyponatremia, high C-reactive protein, CRP, signs of kidney injury. Scoring system, laboratory risk indicator for necrotizing fasciitis, LRINEC, score. Helps assess NSTI risk using lab values like WBC, creatinine, sodium, hemoglobin, glucose, and CRP. Score interpretation. High risk is greater than or equal to 6, and very high risk is greater than or equal to 8, indicative of NSTI, though sensitivity and specificity vary widely. Classification of NSTI types. Type 1, polymicrobial, caused by multiple bacteria, including gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and anaerobes, commonly related to wounds or abscesses. Type 2, monomicrobial, typically involves a single pathogen, such as streptococcus or staphylococcus. Type 3, aquatic bacteria, linked to specific bacteria like Vibrio or Aramonas, often from water exposure. Polymicrobial infections, approximately 50% of NSTIs are polymicrobial with a mix of bacteria. These infections are often associated with prior wounds, which introduce multiple bacteria into the tissue. Clostridial infections, common species, Clostridium perfringens and Clostridium sordelli, notably in postpartum women and injection drug users. Toxins, produces alpha toxin, causing blood vessel clotting and hemolysis, and theta toxin, damages heart muscle. Presentation, often shows high WBC counts, greater than 40,000, gas gangrene, and rapid tissue death, my one crosis, which can be fatal without immediate treatment. Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, gas, represents around one third of NSTI cases. Associated with toxic shock syndrome, TSS, massive cytokine release causes shock and circulatory collapse. Can also lead to muscle death, my one crosis. 
Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA, common cause of monomicrobial NSTI, especially community-acquired MRSA. Virulence factor, the Pantin-Valentine leukosidin gene mutation increases tissue invasion and necrosis. Requires careful antibiotic selection to ensure effective treatment. Aquatic bacteria, Vibrio vulnificans and Aramonas hydrophila, associated risks, Vibrio vulnificans, common in seawater exposure and raw seafood, higher risk in patients with liver disease, especially cirrhosis. Aramonas hydrophila, found in fresh and brackish water. Presentation and treatment. Symptoms progress quickly with high mortality within 48 hours if untreated. Initial treatment involves aggressive surgical removal of infected tissue, similar to other NSTI types. Core management. Early diagnosis and treatment. NSTI requires immediate diagnosis, aggressive treatment with broad-spectrum antibiotics, and volume resuscitation. Surgical intervention. Prompt surgical debridement, removal of infected tissue, is essential for patient survival. Antibiotics. Broad-spectrum coverage. Initiate antibiotics covering MRSA, gram-positive, gram-negative, and anaerobic bacteria. Toxin coverage. For toxin-producing bacteria, use high-dose clindamycin or linezolid to reduce toxin effects. Vancomycin or linezolid should be included for MRSA. Aquatic bacteria. If infection source is aquatic, add doxycycline with ceftriaxone, cefetaxime, for Vibrio, or ciprofloxacin, for Aramonas. Duration. Adjust based on culture results, with treatment lasting 5 to 16 days depending on symptoms and bacteremia presence. Surgical debridement. Urgency. First debridement should occur within 6 to 12 hours to reduce mortality. Procedure. All necrotic, dead, tissue must be removed, and the entire infected area inspected. Indicators of adequate debridement. Signs like bleeding skin edges and healthy muscle suggest effective removal. Special cases. For perennial infections, e.g., Fournier's gangrene, consult urology. Use fecal management or colonic diversion to prevent contamination in perennial wounds. Postoperative wound care. Second look debridement typically within 24 hours, with frequent dressing changes to assess the wound. Dressings. Use saline or dilute bleach solution soaked gauze. Avoid negative pressure therapy initially to allow for easy wound inspection. Adjuvant therapies. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. May help tissue oxygenation but lacks strong evidence for routine use. Intravenous immunoglobulin, IVIG, considered for streptococcal TSS, though its benefits are inconclusive. Experimental therapies. Drugs like AB103, Reltisamod show promise for reducing organ dysfunction but are not yet FDA approved. Postoperative care and prognosis. Monitoring. Patients require close ICU monitoring for complications, including pneumonia, kidney injury, and heart issues. High risk factors for mortality, older age, poor kidney or liver function, heart failure, peripheral vascular disease, cancer, and IV drug use increase mortality risks. Mortality risk calculator. Factors like age, dialysis need, ASA class 4, emergency surgery, and septic shock help predict outcomes. Limb amputation. High risk in NSTI, especially with clostridial infections, 25% of cases involve lower limb amputation. Wound care. Multidisciplinary approach. Requires input from wound care specialists, plastic or burn surgeons for managing extensive wounds. Goals. Keep wounds clean and prevent drying out of vital structures, tendons, bones, cartilage. Document wound progression with regular photos and track care plans. Pain control. Use multimodal pain management, similar to burn care, to ease dressing changes and optimize healing. Negative pressure wound therapy. Beneficial after infection clears, reducing dressing change frequency and promoting blood flow to the wound. Long-term outcomes. Functional impact. Patients with amputations face greater disability, often needing skilled nursing facilities post-discharge. Quality of life. Long-lasting effects on physical function, relationships, and ability to work are common. Importance of high-volume centers. Better outcomes reported at specialized centers. 
Delays from transfer can worsen survival, especially in rural and underserved populations. High readmission rates. 25 to 30 percent of NSTI patients are readmitted, often with worse outcomes if not treated at the initial hospital. Thanks for watching. Remember, early recognition and prompt treatment are key in managing necrotizing infections. Stay tuned for more quick insights, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for updates. See you next time.